and uh, really anticipating and looking forward to a chance to spend some time with the great Michael Palin and his book, Traveling to Work, Diaries, 1988 through 1998. We'll try to keep the fanboy in us tamped down a little bit, you know, try to keep it on the up and up. We don't want to send him screaming from the phone. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you this morning, sir? Um, I'm pretty good, actually, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's winter's coming on here, it's dark all the time, you know what it's like, I get less ebullient in the winter, but, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Outstanding, I hope you're feeling a lot better when you look at some of the receipts for this, uh, new book coming out, but flies off shelves for you, Traveling to Work Diaries 1988 through 1998, I, I guess it's a bit of an understatement to say, um, well, you kind of keep track of your life, don't you? Well, that's what the diaries, by side of the diaries in 1969 um, just uh, because I had a bit of a breather I'd given up smoking I had a lot of willpower I thought what do I want to do next I'm going to keep a diary within uh, like two months of starting the diary uh, we get a meeting together with John Cleese and Graham Chapman Eric Idle and Terry Jones and Terry Gilliam and it's the, the the meeting that started off Monty Python so it's been I kept it really from the days when we first did Monty Python and this, this one is um, is less of Python, more of my travels, but still Python is the theme in the background there. So yes, it's it's um, it's been a record of my life. I, I try and every morning write down what I did the day before as much as possible. <laughs> so this is the third volume of the diaries. Do you find yeah. it? Do you find it odd or I don't know, uncomfortable at all that so many people want to know so many details of your life? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know. They do. Um, <laughs> oh, we do, we do. Don't trust us, we do. <laughs> I mean, I, I would. I, I love details. I love the small details of people's life. You get the PR stuff, you know, which comes out in press releases and is honed down by advertisers and all that sort of thing. But with diaries, I think you get what you wrote at the time, which is honest. You know, I was writing things about the fish called Wonder before we even made the film. And in a diary entry, I'm saying, I don't think the script's very funny. <laughs> then we go on to make the film, and it's one of the funniest films we've done. Purely because we, we, uh, we had great cast, and Kevin Klein was just brilliant in uh, making this really horrible character funny at the same time. <laughs> a diary reminds you, honestly, what you felt. It's, it's, it's a kind of anti-PR thing, in a way. <laughs> 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 well, that's one way of looking at it as well. You know, the, the thing that I love that, that you touch on in this one is, and, and I discovered this quite by accident and thumbing around, I, I had insomnia one night. I was up, and uh, Around the World in 80 Days was being run in, in its entirety. And I sat down, I thought, well, I'll just watch a little bit of this. Well, oh thanks, thanks Did to... Did you your insomnia? <laughs> no, it made it worse. I sat there oh, and I no. watched all of it. I have to tell... Down. <laughs> I, I thought to myself, Michael Palin is the luckiest and unluckiest man in the world all at oh, the well, same time. That's a very good way of describing it. The luckiest and unluckiest, yeah. At all at the same time, what they had you go through and where you went and what you got to see, what, what was oh, fascinating. Yeah. But, you know, only part of me wanted to trade places with you. <laughs> well, I was glad I said yes. I was. The, the BBC said I was the only one who could do this, and it was a new series, and I'd had the camera with me all the time. And I had the charm and the wit and the adventurous spirit and the eloquence. And it was only we were stuck halfway around the world waiting for a boat that hadn't arrived <laughs> that the, uh, the director had had a few beers and admitted I was the fifth person they'd asked to do it. <laughs> all others had turned it down. Oh, dear. So I was, I'm glad I said I would do it. There were some hard times. But I just, I just loved it. It opened up a whole, well, I mean, literally opened up a whole new world for me. Michael Palin with us is a new one, Traveling to Work Diaries, 1988 to 1998. Uh, and the full-color pictures of your travels around the globe are really fantastic. I look at one, um, the final months of the Soviet Union, Leningrad, summer 1991. Tell us a bit about uh, that trip. Uh, did you know things were falling apart? Um, no, we didn't. Um, n and nobody did uh, uh, at the time. There was perestroika, they were opening up a little bit. Um, but the idea that within two months of us leaving the Soviet Union through Odessa and across the Black Sea, the whole thing would have just folded was inconceivable, absolutely inconceivable. We talked to a guy um, when we were traveling through Kiev, um, which of course now capital of Ukraine was then part of the Soviet Union. He said, look, one day, I know, I'm, an, I'm a Ukrainian, uh, and I know that one day we're going to have our country back. It may be not my generation, it may be not my children's generation, but it will happen. 
Yeah, it happened by, you know, it happened by that December. It was extraordinary. Um, I mean, the, the Soviet Union was also hard to know how strong the system was because there's so many, the people we met along the way are real individuals, all cr wonderfully crazy, eccentric people um, who I, I was rather fond of. Um, but, you know, you felt, well, the system will, will continue to last. And it just didn't, and it collapsed very, very fast. I have to ask about, you know, when you make these magnificent travels, as one of the more, you know, better known, you know, people look at you, uh, they, they know you everywhere. You There's, there's no, no denying your fame, but when you hit the road the way you did, you hit a lot of spots where I'm betting there were a lot of people who would, wouldn't know you if they fell over you. No, that's, that's absolutely true. The most extraordinary time I, I was recognized was at the beginning of a series called Full Circle, where we went right around the Pacific Rim. We started in a tiny island called Little Diomede, up between Alaska and, and Russia. And there's about, I don't know, 20 Inuit families living on the island. It's very bare, very bleak. We filmed up there all day long. Three elders of the Inuit tribes have followed me down to the boat at the end, and they kind of obviously want to ask me a question. And eventually, you know, they nudged one, one of them stepped forward and said, hey, Aren't you the guy from Monty Python and the Holy Grail? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was no, nowhere more barren and isolated in this tiny island, but they'd seen Monty Python <laughs> on satellite the night before. <laughs> and hated it, I have to say. No, that's not true. <laughs> and, and they loved it in their, in their own particular way. Uh, Michael but Palin. They like me anyway. Yeah, now that's yeah, really that's, important. that's all yeah. that's important, yeah, really. Like other guys much, and they said you should have, yeah, get rid of the tall one. Said, yeah, <laughs> we've been trying to for years. Traveling, <laughs> traveling to work. The book Diaries, nineteen eighty eight to nineteen ninety eight. It's Michael Palin with us, Riley and Scott on WRK. Mentioned last time writing a lot about a fish called Wanda. This time we learn a lot about fierce creatures. The the follow and some of the problems, difficulties. I. I enjoyed the few passages in the diary about uh, getting getting the feedback from focus groups, right? You, you put heart and soul and work into the movie, and a bunch of people in a room in New York City then decide which parts get cut and which parts get reshot. Yep. Uh, well, these most of the movies I made uh, from kind of, I suppose, the Python movies, Time Bandits even, with Gilliam, we didn't, uh, focus groups weren't, weren't as sophisticated an instrument as they became, um, but certainly by the time we got to Fierce Creatures, uh, it was very, very important to get these focus groups. And Fierce Creatures just didn't have the kind of natural ease with, which Wanda did. Uh, Wanda just worked. It was a small budget movie that worked very, very well. You kind of knew that from the start. Fierce Creatures needed a little bit more uh, careful handling, and um, I suppose that was why they kept showing it to focus groups but uh, i think it what it what it does is it panics people all the people involved in the movie say, oh my god you know we, we sh showed it in cleveland and there's only 73 percent you know positive or something like that we're gonna have to reshoot this scene so people use the fo focus groups to make changes that they want to do to the movie i don't think that's altogether healthy <laughs> no and probably really annoying as a performer too well as a performer you have no rights by that time you know <laughs> i i I actually do do in the diary. I I, I refer to my film outing and uh, you've got mail at the very end of the diary, um, um, it, which um, you know with, with Tom Hanks and and um, and Meg Ryan. And uh, I was in the movie for a week, and it was just wonderful. It was the most fantastic week filming in New York with Meg Ryan and night shoots and all that up on the Upper West Side. And in the end, um, you, you know, it was cut from the film. So <laughs> as an actor, you just got to you got to. You just got to swallow your pride, really. Well, as long as they don't cut the paycheck from the film, really, that's, you know. No, they paid me extremely well. It was the best paid job I never had. Or rather, <laughs> <laughs> the best, best paid job that was never seen. Understood. So it's probably on some... It's probably in some bin on some cutting room floor somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. I have the uh, you know the director's cut of You've Got Mail. It's an underground thing. I, I think it, I think you're in that one. Oh really? Oh, wow, really? <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 He's, oh, he's, you, you, you just raised my hope. <laughs> oh man, you're yes, jerking yes. Michael Palin around. <laughs> Come on. Thank the, you. The book is traveling to work. Got to ask you one quick question. Who haven't you worked with that you would love to before you say you know I'm done with all this? Oh. Well, there's quite a few people, you know, sort of, um, there's some 
good comedians I'd like to work with out there. You know, um, I've, I've been on the verge of working with Eddie Izzard, and I think he's an interesting guy. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, there are all those... Uh, uh, Steve Buscemi was the one I really wanted to mm. work with. Not a comedian, actually, but capable of giving terrifically funny parts and also being kind of quite threatening as well. And quite an attractive man as well. Oh, he's, he's beautiful. <laughs> he's in a hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting way. Yes, he is. Uh, what are you thinking? Yeah. Yeah, that's he's good. That, that's what I was thinking. The book is Traveling to Work Diaries, 1988 through 1998. The great Michael Palin is the author. Michael, thanks for taking time out of what we know is a busy schedule for us. We're oh, huge it's a great fans. Pleasure. Lovely to talk to you. We really appreciate it. Have a great, great day. Yeah, happy holidays.